everybody welcome back to my channel my name is nicole and in today's video i'm going to be walking you through how i am using my hobonichi cousin for 2023 as a journal so this video will be timestamped. so if you're only interested in how i'm using a particular section of the planner feel free to skip ahead and jump around but before we even open this planner up i wanted to sort of talk about why i decided to move back into a hobonichi cousin when in my original planner lineup, which the video for that will be linked down below, I didn't include this. So the main reason that I fell in love with the Hobonichi Cousin in the first place and the reason that I'm coming back to it now is that I really, really love each day having its own page. So the main reason that I really like having one day per page is that it allows me to write things down immediately. So whenever I think of something that I want to write down or want to work out some thoughts on something, it's very easy when you have a day per page to just open it up and write. Whereas with the take a note, while it is dated and the layout would also technically allow for that, the way that I was creative journaling in the take a note meant that I was batching journaling sessions and was doing multiple days at once in order to get the spacing and the aesthetic of the spread to look the way that I wanted. And I felt that that wasn't very functional for me because I would either forget to write things down because I was waiting until a couple of days had passed and then things that I might have wanted to include just don't end up making it in. And then also spacing wise, with having two days per page on the take a note, I felt that I didn't have enough room. And while I know a lot of people find that the Hobonichi Cousin A5 size is very intimidating, I found that at least for me, like once I start writing something down, like sometimes I just can't stop. And if you're used to having an A5 sized page and then all of a sudden you're downsizing, it just doesn't seem like enough space. And another reason that I really like having a day per page is that every day is a fresh start. Where in a weekly spread, you might have a theme or you might want everything to look cohesive. On a daily spread, you're free to do whatever you want. You can keep a theme going if you want, but you don't have to. And if you don't like the way something is turning out, or if you're writing about maybe not so great day, you don't have to look at it all week. You can just turn the page and move on. And that is that. And that's something that I think is really freeing when it comes to journaling, because if you're journaling every day, you're not going to love every spread that you do. You're not going to love the events of every day that happened. So the ability to just quickly and freely flip the page when those times come up, I think is very, very helpful, both for my mental health and also just to keep going in a planner, if that makes sense. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's hop into the actual planner. So opening it up for these initial like yearly and setup pages, I just have a nameplate sticker here, a vinyl that I made myself, and then a sticky note that just has some different spread ideas and ideas for what to put in the daily pages, say if I don't have any ideas off the top of my head, or if I end up skipping a page and don't want to go back and fill it in with like a daily journal entry, I can just use one of these ideas. And then for the title page, I just taped in the like title page of the pamphlet that came with the planner. And then for these yearly pages, I just put down some Virgo and paper kits. And then I'm using the year at a glance to track days off and holidays. And then I will most likely use the perpetual calendar as a media and like content tracker, similar to the way that I planned on using these pages in the take a note. So in terms of the monthly pages, I am doing a very standard monthly, basically just high level events and appointments, birthdays, that kind of thing. So that was December. And then here is the current month of January. And then skipping to the weekly sections. So I have filled out all of the weekly spreads to a degree up until today that I'm filming this, which is the 18th of January. But these are not the main focus of this planner. And it was the same when I used this planner last year. This is just an extra if I feel like doing it or if I want to do it. But the main like meat and potatoes, I guess, of this planner is the daily pages for me. So they are all filled out up until this point, but I'm not guaranteeing or putting any pressure on myself to do it like going forward and every week has to be set up. And you'll see that in these, I don't even finish some of them and I'm not too pressed about it at all. Because if this were the main reason I was using this planner, I'd still be in the take a note. Like this is just for fun and because I had time and that's 
part of the reason why the Take a Note actually is still up to date and current as of now, but that's just because I've had time to do it. And I feel like if and when things get a little bit busier and maybe some of that time that I had goes away, one of those planners is going to drop and it's going to be the Take a Note because this is just more functional for me in terms of keeping up with it. So this is the current week. And one thing that I do want to mention, which is very different from the way I was using this planner last year as a journal, is that you'll see that throughout these weekly pages and throughout the daily pages, you're not going to see very many to-do lists. If you want to see how I was using this planner last year, I will link the videos that I had made down below. And you'll see that those are very structured, but this is just kind of more free-flowing. Whereas last year, I would write out basically everything that I did that day. And I just kind of have moved away from that because as I was flipping through old planners, I realized that that's not the part I want to see. Like it's there and it's fine, but that information, if I need to reference it functionally throughout the year, that's all in my Hobonichi weeks. I don't need it in here and I would rather see those like pictures and memories and thoughts and all of that kind of stuff rather than like, oh, I did the dishes today. You know, like it's some of those will make their way in here but it's not going to be like today to-do list and i'm just really into this style of journaling rather than the style i was doing last year at this time i might go back to it who knows but for right now this is how i am setting those pages up so on the turning the page to a new year i just put in this vision board which is actually the first version of my vision board that i had made for the year uh but it ended up not really going with the theme that I had for my take a note so I didn't end up using it but I still like it so I just printed it out and put it here so moving on to the daily pages one major difference in the way that I am using these pages this year as opposed to last year is that you're going to see that there's no consistent structure in the way that these pages are set up so in my last year's journal I was pretty much doing the exact same thing every day which was a to-do list here journaling here and for the most part the design would match what I was doing in the weekly spreads but this year I'm just doing whatever I want whenever I want and I have found that I really really like the way that the pages turn out and that sort of eclecticness of them and I feel that it also fits better with how I like to journal because some days I feel like that layout wasn't very conducive to what I was talking about, if that makes sense. So I would say eight out of 10 times that I am working in these daily pages, I don't have a plan on how I want it to look or what I want to use. It's all based off of either what has already happened that day when I'm sitting on a journal or what I think might happen throughout the day. And this obviously isn't a perfect science and some layouts aesthetically look better than others. But honestly, even if I feel like something isn't looking great in the beginning, by the end, I really have found that it looks fine and there's really no mistake that you can't fix, which is something that I was really struggling with last year where it was like I would make a mistake or I wouldn't like the way that a page turned out and I would just sort of quit on it. I would get really sad about it, but I don't know. This more chaotic style of journaling, I think really helps because in this style, I feel like imperfection and mess, quote unquote, really suit it. So I'm just going to flip through these pages that I've already done, show you all the different ways that I have set these up and maybe give you insight into why I set certain pages up the way I did if I feel like that's valuable information. So here's the first. We've got some long form like letter to myself style journaling here. Got some pictures down here of some of my favorite memories from last year. And then we have more of a point form style, high level, like random thoughts style journaling over here. Because sometimes I feel like my brain just works in like spurts. And those spurts are just as valuable as like writing a paragraph. So this would be a situation where I don't feel like that sort of structure is conducive. On the third, I was playing around with some stamps because I've always had a love-hate relationship with stamps where I love the way that they look, but I hate using them. So I was trying to manifest using some of my old stamps that I found in my drawer. And you'll see that I think it was a success because I used them quite a bit throughout. Here we've got more of that like random point form style. I swatched all my fountain pens. I talked about a sandwich that I was eating, a quote from a podcast, just random things like that. And then here we have 
more of that long form style again and I would split up my sessions with washi tape. This is one of my probably favorite spreads that I've done so far. I just love the colors. I love the washi tape. And this is another one of those mixtures where I have some like stream of consciousness journaling up here. And then I also finished watching a TV show. So I wrote my review of the show down here. On the 7th, I noticed that my apartment was like in a total state of disaster, like probably the worst that it's ever been. So I made this master cleaning to-do list. I put this meme up at the top to title it. And this is also just like forewarning FYI. If you at any point decide to like pause and read anything that I write, just know that I don't censor my language in terms of like using profanity. I do try to censor the way that I speak on videos, but yeah, everything is fair game in terms of when I write in my journals. So I will block out like sensitive information, but I won't block out like profanity. So it is sort of read at your own risk when it comes to that. Um, on this day, I did like a little weekend dashboard because I was like getting my life together in terms of my like physical environment. And then I was like, I just need to get my life together this entire weekend. So the whole quest idea was um, inspired by Claire from Claire from online on Instagram and YouTube now and she'll make like long to-do lists and call them like side quests but I definitely felt like I had a main quest which was like to clean up my apartment so I had a main quest here and then everything else that I wanted to do that weekend were side quests and I really like the way that this turned out and then on the 9th we had just one huge journal entry so I often will split up my sessions so like I wrote this at one point in the day, I wrote this at another point in the day, and I wrote this at a different point, but this was all just one session, and I think I was really anxious this day, so that's when these tend to happen, or on days when I am stressed out. On the 10th, I got a new fountain pen ink and wanted to commemorate that, so I did a little bit of a doodle situation, and I really like the way that this turned out too. Yeah, my sleep schedule was like so messed up at this point and I ended up taking like a five and a half hour nap which had me thinking about what even is a nap so that's where that came from. The Australian Open Draw was released there. Oh this might also be another contender for favorite spread but I did some more just random journaling and then Pipsticks was having a buy one get one free sale and I kind of went ham as you can see so I just wrote down everything that I got because one it's cute and two I was also like forgetting what I was was what was in my cart and what I was buying so that was very helpful on this day I wrote about the Pirates re-signing Andrew McCutcheon which was huge for me because he is one of my favorite athletes in any sports so that was super awesome so I had a lot of feelings about that so I wrote them all down and then doodled the Clemony Bridge this spread is my first like pure memory keeping spread that I think I did so my best friend in real life is a bullet journaler and we went to a local cafe and had like a journaling session which was nice so I have like the receipt here I journaled about what we did and then I also used more of that like Hobonichi pamphlet that was I taped in at the beginning because it was like cracker and biscuit themed which was really cute and I thought really fit so there was that and then on the 15th, the Australian Open started, so I tipped in the bracket and then also started like a notes page in terms of like anything that I want to write down about the Australian Open will probably happen here just so I have like a hub for that. Some people I wanted to track their progress. I really need to update this, but we'll do that later. And then I also tabbed it off since this is a two week event and I will most likely be coming back to it. The 16th was another memory keeping spread. This was for a day trip we took to Pittsburgh. The way that this actually came about with like the scrapbook element, cause I was really originally just going to do a like long form journaling with some pictures, but I didn't test this stamp ink before I used it and it bled so bad. So I ended up using this map that I took from a rest stop and sort of pasted it in, which I think actually turned out super cute. So, and then on the 17th, I, I think I did this spread at the end of the day and then I just had a bunch of random feelings and then I journaled about each one of them.
in their own little like segmented way. And I really, really like this. And I think I will be doing this a lot more. So those are all of the spreads that I have currently in my Hobonichi. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I will do my best to answer them. Uh, thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.